because we are better together. That's the whole piece, right? We always say in the round pen, it's collaboration over competition, right? And in the back of my mind, what I hear when I say that is we, all of us are better together. And so welcome to the round pen live. If you have never been here live before, uh, we do these once a month and uh, they're just live and kind of showing up hopefully with value based on what we've been hearing on the month, right? What have we heard this month that people seem to be looking for? How can we help you at the round pen? We do versus business mindset. That's our thing. How do we collaborate? collaboratively, all of us help each other build our businesses and help people with this incredible work we do around the world. And so um, we call it horse facilitated development. You're going to hear myself and Jessica use the words horse facilitated development. We use those words for a number of reasons, but in the round pen, we use that um, as a catch all term, as an umbrella to be able to welcome each of you. So whether you do horse facilitated psychotherapy, EAL, um, you just work with the horse human connection. That's the wording you use. Maybe you are EGALA certified or PATH or therapeutic riding. The list goes on and on and on around the world. You're all welcome here because it's about fostering the horse human connection and really growing, growing that on a global scale. And so super excited uh, for all of you that have shown up live today. Let's, uh, let's get going. So some quick housekeeping. This is meant to be interactive. Okay, use the chats, use the reactions, um, post in the chats as we go along. If able, turn your camera on. I know everyone's got a crazy life. So I always say mute um, because who knows in the background and hopefully my background stays quiet today. Um, if you can't turn your camera on, I get it. Um, but we're a team, work together, um, you know, for each other, throw your comments in the chat, throw your questions in the chat, and it's going to be a great hour. So yes, we are recording. It will come out on our YouTube channel, uh, which is just Equine Entrepreneur. <clears throat> All right, so Equine Assisted Way, who are we? So Jessica and I are uh, the founders and owners of Equine Assisted Way and Equine Entrepreneur. And so we always say we know how this game works because we're in the trenches too. We do this work every single day. And so what we found is we both have separate facilities and we opened up and both of us, I mean, mine within three weeks was jam packed full and Jessica's much the same. And what we found was there's a need. We had people coming from, you know, all over Canada. Uh, I've had people from all over the world. And, you know, what we found is there's not enough equine entrepreneurs people that are serious about changing lives with this work. And so that's why we opened up. And so we do certification, we do premium programs, uh, and we do mentorship like we do here in the round pen. And so giveaway, fortune favors the bold and throw it in the chat. How many of you, you know, uh, love that, that piece, right? Because it's about taking responsibility. That's what to me, fortune favors the bold or fortune favors the brave means. It's about showing up when maybe you could have been doing something else. I bet some of you thought, ah, I don't know if I wanna go live or I'm not ready to unmute my camera. So maybe I should just stay home or do something else. It's the bold and the brave that show up that create things in their lives, okay? And so we at Equine Entrepreneur, we were all about kind of, um, providing that fortune back to people and so we're going to do a giveaway if you can throw your full name in the chat if it's not your stage name for zoom because we're going to do a draw for either a one hour mentorship with either myself or jessica feeling fortunate i love that bold and the brave the right ones are here um so it's either going to be an hour mentorship with jess or i or it's going to be our sponsorship program, which is a signature program where businesses uh, are able to um, work, you're able to work with businesses, not just like, and this is as a business, not a not for profit, where you can implement a sponsorship program and never worry about funding again. And so if you win, you can choose from one of those. Okay, Lynn, yeah, Lynn's been in our royalties group, and she's really showing up. So great. Let's keep her moving. It's going to be such a fun hour here. Okay, so today is all about how to nail your niche and fill your facility. Okay, anyone here again, use the chat, anyone would love to be working in their niche and actually 
filling the sponsorship, pardon me, filling your facility. I'm reading Juanita's question here. Yeah, anybody want to be able to work with the people you want to work with, the people that fulfill you up, that make you feel like you're working in significance and impact and actually fill your facility? If so, you are in the right place. All right. So yeah, I would need it. It's the sponsorship program that we have here. And Dawn's saying, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, no question. Perfect. You're in the right place. Okay. So let's jump into it. All right. So why is it imperative to niche? And so what's niching? It's simply working within a specific market in this work we do. Okay, that's a niche. It's saying I work with, you know, children or adults. And we're going to go into how you do this today. But that's all a niche is. Okay. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about why it's imperative to niche. And I'm hoping in the next 45 minutes or so, I can convince you of why it can actually build your business and fill your facility, as opposed to the opposite. So why is it imper imperative to niche? This picture here is a really, uh, a good example for me of why it's imperative. And so this was a leadership through horsemanship program. We have, um, I ran, this was a year ago, 11 littles through this program, wildly successful, okay? We had 11 kids, we were um, doing it in two separate groups, back to back, uh, every one of them, their parents wanted to sign them up for level two. Um, every one of them loved it. They showed up every week. They were ready to go. Super successful on the outside. Okay. Um, financially very successful. It was $1,100 two hours. It was great. But here's the but. And I always say in horse facilitated development, we work with the but. Okay. I dreaded walking into the pasture every single Thursday. <laughs> I dreaded it. Okay. These 11 smiley little faces ready to go. I dreaded it. Why? Because I wasn't working within my niche. It was successful to everybody else, but I wasn't working within my niche. And so if any of you, and I'd love to know, do you ever, like, let's just be honest about it. Do you ever wonder why you're choosing to do this work? You want to do this work. You love this work, but you have, do you ever have that little feeling of dread? I'd love to know. Let, let, let's just throw that in the chat because I really needed to nail that down. Why do I have this dread? You know, and you know what it was? I was on a slow roll to burnout. Why? I was not working within my niche. Yeah, so people are saying they feel that, of course. Dread it all the time. Yeah, Larissa, and I'm gonna guess that you're wondering why. I'm working with horses. I'm doing this incredible work. Why am I dreading it, right? And it's easy to justify it, Holly. Absolutely, Naomi, sometimes. I love the authenticity and the vulnerability here. And so I really had to step back and realize Success and impact are two different things. We're here for impact. We're here for significance. So what was I doing messing around with, as Lynn calls them, littles when it's not my niche, okay? So here's the thing. There's a genius inside of you that you were born with and you'll take to the grave. That is your piece. That's your zone that's working at where you create significance. And it's only when we work within our niche that we bring the impact that we can to the world. Okay, so just because it looks like success doesn't mean that it's your niche and that you should be working there. All right. So when we try to be everything to everyone. Okay, so here's the thing. When we try to be everything to everyone and we're working with everyone, because here's the thing with horses, they're gurus. They can do it all. Doesn't mean they should, doesn't mean you should. So when you're trying to be everything to everyone, no one is hearing your message. You are noise. No one's hearing your message. Okay. Number two that can happen is the wrong people can hear your message. Okay. So you're putting it out there. You're excited. You just want to fill your facility and either no one hears your message or wrong people hear your message. And you're wondering why you're feeling burnt out. You're not working with the right people. Okay. You're trying to be everything to everyone. And number three, that can be happening is your, this is a butt kick, your dream clients, the ones that you want to work with, they're working with the person that's told them that they are the best contributor at that specific thing. They're looking for you, but because you are marketing to everyone, they have found somebody else that is the best contributor to the horse human connection at that specific thing. Does that sting? I don't know if that stings any of you guys, 
But when I look at that picture of leadership through horsemanship, that stings to know that my ideal client is working with someone else <laughs> because they were willing to niche. They were willing to bite the bullet and say, I'm going for it. And I'm messing around really close to burnout. Okay. And so um, here's the thing. When we try to be everything to everyone, no one sees significant results. We work in a powerful arena and nobody sees significant results when we're trying to be everything to everyone. Okay. And so when people can't find you, they go to the big name trusted provider. Okay. They go to the one who you think is competition because you're trying to be everything to everyone. Okay. So yeah, it's time to define it. You betcha, Jess. I'm not frozen. I'm trying to get my PowerPoint to move for me. There we go. So when we try to, this is the butt kick. When we try to be everything to everyone, we end up nothing significant to anyone. Okay. Here's the thing, guys. Less is more. You. You is a capital here. You, my darling, you are the niche. Okay. And you're saying, Tamara, I thought you always talk about how you're just a contributor. The horses are the guru. You betcha. The horses are the guru. But you, my darlings, you are the niche. Okay. So you in all your glory. Does anybody get through the chat? Does it make you nervous to think, oh, gosh, I'm the niche. What do I have to bring to the table? <laughs> Throw it in there. Um, this photo is really, really funny because you, me, all of us, in all your glory, you are the niche. And I look at this photo and I say, all your glory, because I look and I go, oh, my teeth are so crooked. And like Dawn says, yeah, it's a big responsibility. Who am I to? We can all look at our own photos and pick them apart. Or we stand up tall and we say, I am the niche. And I need to start defining that so that the people can show up. So um, Holly says, absolutely. I think of sites I visited and I see a laundry list of what they cater to. It gives me a feeling like they're running through a general program that doesn't focus on a certain group, what a certain group might need. You bet, absolutely. So are you showing up? Somebody said big responsibility, it is. Are you showing up as the most powerful you in all of your glory in what you can coach on at the top max level? You, you, you and you and you and only you and all your glory and crooked teeth and whatever those pieces are that we hold on to, you are the niche. Um, Naomi, I love it. I'm the niche. It describes, well, why I'm a good fit for the people I help best. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Brenda. That's super nice of you. So, um, yeah. So if you are the niche, how do we figure out our niche? Okay, and so I'm gonna give you three steps to nailing your niche. So we're gonna write them down. You're gonna work on them um, in the next however long. It's your business, but we wanna share this movement with you around the world. So number one, it's about coaching one step ahead of where you just were, okay? Coaching one step ahead of where you just were. And so this is all about authenticity. This is such a powerful world word. And in the wildies, we talk about this all the time authenticity. People can feel it a mile away. Okay. Um, and so coaching one step ahead is about figuring out where you just were and what you can coach on. And so think about it. If you were in a divorce or not a divorce, marriage counseling, let's go with that. And you were wanting to work on it. Do you want to work with the therapist that is book smart, but has never been in a relationship? Or do you want to work with the therapist that, I mean, they don't have to go through divorce, but have they been in relationships? Do they know how relationships work? Do they have a variety of experiences in relationship? Okay, so that'd be the first question. Second one is that this is a journey, okay? And so where do you find your brilliance? Where were you just? What are the pieces in your life? What do you know? That can be a really good place to find your niche is what do you know? What are things that you know, like you know, like you know, and you feel like if someone called you and said, hey, I need you in half an hour to show up. What are things you know, okay, that you're really comfortable at your basics? So I'd love to know in the chat, what are things that you know? What are things that you feel like you, you, you just know? At a base level, somebody stopped you on the corner, asked you what you're into, what are some things you know? 
So that can be a really good place to find your brilliance. And the second place that I think is even more powerful, things that you have been through, okay? So coaching one step ahead is not about being the person who's totally book smart. It's about a journey. And if you think about a journey, and let's say your niche client is at part A, okay? And the journey goes all the way to Z, okay? So there are people at Z who are coaching, but they're not one step ahead. They're 18 steps ahead or 26, I guess we do alphabet, right? And so they forget what it's like to be at A, okay? But one step ahead can be those pieces that even 20 years later, you go, I have tools that could help that person. They're you. Coaching one step ahead is finding the niche of you, of the pieces that you would have loved to have had, but it wasn't out there. Or the tools that you were given that moved you forward. And so where's your brilliance? Again, in the chat, would love to know what are the pieces that you are one step ahead on? What are those pieces that you get excited about, that you think about, geez, I could totally show up down in my pasture, in my round pen, in my arena, and I might not be over the top confident, but I can contribute, knowing that I have the gurus of my herd to back me up. What are the pieces? So I'm going to give you a moment in the chat. What are the pieces that you are one step ahead on? What, where can you coach one step ahead? Use some chaos, horse owners seeking a deeper connection um, with their horse. Uh, women in chaos looking to get unstuck and move forward from a place of inner strength. Awesome, awesome. I can't see who that was, but good one. Again, there is no better or worse, but what can you coach one step ahead on? Where's your brilliance? How are you finding your brilliance? Grief recovery, Kelly, boom, love it. It is so specific and isn't it interesting that one step ahead can be maybe one step ahead of the hardest things you've ever had in your life. Isn't it interesting that that becomes the opportunity for you to help other people? Uh, Jacqueline, working with people with additional needs, fantastic. Women who've had their boundaries broken, military, finding your voice and your path forward. Incredible, incredible. And what I always point out, which is why I'm such a big, um, I'm always pushing the chat, is that each of these are powerful in their own authenticity, okay? And so I would not coach one step ahead in the military, okay? I have no military experience. Okay. And so am I the person to say, well, the horses can do it. So sure, come on out. Or could I refer them? And I can't see the name in front of me. Um, but or could I refer them to the person that's authentically one step ahead? That's how you find power in a niche. Uh, generational trauma, trafficking survivors. Fantastic. So if you're thinking you're one step ahead is not important. I want you to take a look at the chat because in the chat is a whole bunch of one steps ahead. And I almost guarantee you can look at any of those and say, wow, that is powerful. We see in other people what we cannot see in ourselves. Okay. And so uh, DV, child trauma, family trauma. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Naomi, nervous system regulation, PTSD, depression, anxiety, personality disorders. Great. So there is no better or worse niche. There's the niche that you are willing to step fully and authentically in. That's where your power comes. So step one is simply coaching one step ahead. Okay, step two, to nailing your niche is becoming passion on fire. It is so, so imperative that you find a place that you can become incredibly passionate about the niche that you're working in. Okay. And so passion, it's not good enough. It's passion on fire. I like the way my little emoji is burning me on. I didn't mean to make that, but isn't that fun? So been there, done that, unfortunately, isn't enough. It's absolutely imperative that you are on fire about your niche. Okay. And so um, if you're not bringing it, like really bringing it and stepping down into your pasture and saying, I know who I can work best with. I know the tools because I was there and I was looking for the tools, okay? Now I know them. Now I can contribute and help, okay? But from there, 
it's about that passion. It's that place of if you're not bringing it, why are you even showing up? When I go back to my leadership, I was trying to bring it, but I was on slow burn. Why was I even showing up, right? That's the whole thing. And when you go back to your space, your niche, your time, and I like this Barb saying family addiction recovery, Fiona, women boundaries, finding your voice, discovering your authentic self, emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where we find that passion on fire, right? And the thing is, if you go back to that time, you needed you. You needed a horse facilitator that could that had a niche that you were looking for. You needed you. So now you need to show up for them. And this is the thing. This is about getting passion on fire about your niche. It's about being passion on fire for those clients, right? And really those results that your clients can obtain from working with you and your herd. And a lot of times people have a hard time with this place of results, okay? And here's the thing about results. Um, when you work so closely in your niche, you work with the people you should be working with in an authentic place of being one step ahead, they've found their home. They find their results. They find it through the herd as the herd step into the gurus that they are. And so stand behind your herd as the powerful gurus they are and understand that when you work in your niche, you can just show up, okay? So it is not about everything. And that's the thing is, and how many of you have been stuck in the last, and this is not about time. You may have been doing this work for 20 years or 20 months or 20 days. <laughs> and how great would that be on day 20 to say, I'm just gonna niche right now. But how many of you have been, maybe you're having a little hard time in your mind because you've been trying to be everything to everyone and maybe that's not even doing it right now. So I'm just gonna give you a moment. Of, does anybody have a hard time thinking about, geez, I would niche down <laughs> to a place of just working? Like, could it just work that I could work just with people that I should be, just with people that I'm one step ahead of and just show up from a place of passion on fire? Anybody nervous about that? I'm gonna give you a moment in that. Cause you know what I would say? You wanna know how to fill your facility? You show up passion on fire. That's how you do. People don't follow, uh, you know, people follow people. They feel someone they wanna be a part of. They feel someone who was already there in authenticity. And they say, you know what? I've tried other things. Maybe this is a place that could actually move me forward because you've been able to cut through and actually dig into that place. So Dawn, you'll be nervous about getting enough clients. Love your vulnerability, Dawn. Fantastic. And Holly says, used to be, right? By the end of this Zoom, I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to answer some of that for anybody who's saying, I don't know. So your belief must be through the roof. It really does. If you're working on um, this place, I just talked about reflection a few moments ago, but if you're working on fake it till you make it, doesn't work in horse facilitated development. It doesn't, okay? We have to work with authenticity. We have to work with vulnerability and showing up in an arena that is not our arena that we've never been on um, is a surefire way to at kind of least um, throw you into burnout. Um, imposter, all of those places that we have no, uh, no place being. Okay. So number one, authenticity, coach one step ahead. Number two, passion on fire. And number three, your niche should be one inch wide by a mile deep. Okay. One inch wide by a mile deep. However, most entrepreneurs, and I think we see it a lot in equine entrepreneurs, go one mile wide, I can work with everyone and every, everything by an inch deep. What do we mean by that? An inch deep is adults, children, males, females, heartbeats, you know, whatever they got, show up because it's so wide. We will work with everyone because maybe the concern is that there's not enough clients in the world, okay? Um, and so that space of one mile wide, one inch deep, you are on either a slow burn or a very quick burn to, uh, to burn out. And so think about the power of the sun. If you're out on a day that is, I know we're Fahrenheit Celsius issue, I'm sure here, but if you're on a day that's warm, right? It's warm, it's t-shirt weather, uh, you're probably not gonna get burnt by the sun, 
you might get a little red, right? But it's not that intense, okay? That's kind of one mile wide. We work with everybody. It's not that intense. It doesn't hit anybody that strongly, right? But then we take a magnifying glass to the sun. Take a magnifying glass to the sun on that same regular day, and guess what? You can actually start a fire. You could actually start a fire with that magnifying glass being so specific at where it's pointed. It's the exact same thing, right? It's that if you're incredibly specific, you can cut through the noise. And that's the thing is we live in a world that I'm sure we can all agree, it is noisy out there. And guess what? We have a lot of competition when we're in the noise. What do I mean by that? Well, the barn down the road, I say this all the time, is charging $30 for riding lessons. You are so much different than riding lessons, but you're creating too much noise when you are a mile wide. And so the people out there reading the message, it's a mile wide, they don't understand why you don't do riding lessons, right? Or maybe you're therapeutic riding and they don't understand. They're looking for on the ground work. A mile wide gives you a ton of competition, okay? And so in that mile wide, when we are not the magnifying glass, when we are sun on a warm day, we contribute to the noise or we pull out our magnifying, my magnifying, not microphone, magnifying glass and we cut through the noise. So my question in the chat, are you contributing? Are you, well, maybe not even right now, but going forward, are you gonna contribute to the noise or are you gonna cut through the noise? Less is more, less is all, always, always more. And so to start a fire, you've got to do one or two things, magnify one or two things really, really well. I'll give you a couple examples, but I want to know in the chat, are you contributing to the noise or are you cutting through the noise? So the only person I can see on my screen other than Juanita is Elaine Freeman. So I'm going to put her on the spot <laughs> to get in the chat. Are you contributing in the noise? Or are you cutting through the noise? She's going, oh gosh, I got to find the keyboard. Um, but would like to know from everybody, um, are you willing to pull out the magnifying glass? Lynn Mosley, I think you're on here. Are you willing to pull out the magnifying glass? And how has that changed in your world? Hi, sorry, <laughs> I was on mute. Um, yeah, definitely the last six weeks working with you guys, taking out the magnifying glass a lot and lots has changed. Um, really drilled down into the niches I really wanna work in and, and, and letting go of all that other stuff. And, uh, and it's, 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 it's been a short amount of time and, and lots, of, lots has changed and all for the better. Awesome, Lynn. Awesome. And Lynn's been uh, really dove in and put her head down. And I'm sure there was fear there to say, you know, I really need to fill my facility. So, you know, could this really work? Right? Yeah, there's there's lots of fear. <laughs> but it's okay. There's a, a book, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. It's, it's just I sort of held on to that. Awesome. Good job, Lynn. Thanks so much for jumping on on the spot there. So Don Roberts is saying starting to cut through the noise and starting to look Perfect. It starts with a start. Every fire starts with a spark. Okay. And as you get that magnifying glass out and get intensity below you, you can build the fire. Alana's doing it. Awesome. Fiona, uh, cutting sounds like a good plan. Perfect. Cutting through, cutting through is not always an easy process. Absolutely, Jillian. I always say, I didn't say it would be easy. We said it would be worth it. Right. So, zooming in. So, one inch wide by a mile deep. How do you do that? You continue to zoom in. Who do you work with? Do you work with adults? Do you work with children? Do you work with all genders? What is their one step ahead? Okay, so what is the piece that you're one step ahead that you're working with? What's the piece that you can be passionate on fire? What are non-negotiables? When we go one inch wide, when we know I work with female adults that have that are at a point in their life where they need to make a decision. Let's just say those are that's the deep, okay? Female adults make a decision and maybe the next piece is they are ready to make a decision, okay? That's what one inch wide by a mile deep starts to look like, okay? So again, grab a piece of paper when you get home and start drilling down. What is your one inch wide? If you were brave enough to do it, what is your one inch wide, okay? Are you contributing to the noise of the world or are you cutting through it? 
become the magnifying glass. Just think about that. If you put your phone in a vehicle, I did it last round pen, and the magnifying glass came through, it overheated and just turned off, right? Okay, it was so powerful. So what are your breadcrumbs? How are you zooming in? How do you become one inch wide by a mile deep? Okay, so understanding you are the niche, one step ahead of where you just were, passion on fire, not from a made up place, from that place of I could whip this thing off in five minutes. I'm passion on fire about it and getting out of scarcity into the magnifying glass place of one inch wide by a mile deep. But, <laughs> so I always say in horse facilitated development, we work with the but. What's the but? When people come to your pastor and they're telling you that things are good and you're wondering kind of why they're there and they kind of work to a place and then it's the but, right? And all of a sudden they pause. Well, things are good, but, or that's really great, but, or, you know, and you're just waiting for that place. So here's the but. That but is that place of what if I can't get enough clients? What if nobody hears me through the noise? What if what I have is not good enough? Okay. Uh, Carrie's got a thumbs up. I'm picking it up. Yeah. What if, what if my niche is not as good as the next person's niche? Anybody else? What's your butts? Throw them in. You got to know where you're at to know where you're going. Um, what's your butts? What's your, what's holding your back? When you think of working only with your dream clients, the one that keep you out of burnout, that keep you feeling amazing within your zone of genius, what's your butts? Jessica, what's your butts? That's great. <clears throat> that I still won't be found. Yeah. Yeah. That I still won't be found. So here's the thing. Jessica and I thought originally we can work with all the horsey people. We can work with barriers. <laughs> we could work with massage therapists for horses, equine therapists, equine, I guess, equine chiropractors. We could work with vets. This is where it started. And we realized we would never have been able to zero in on, on you, on the ones in the round pen, had we decided we were going to be everything to everyone. Imagine if we were sitting here talking about farriers at the same time. We all use farriers. But do you want the magnifying glass there? No, you, we can't help you build your business when we're trying to be everything one mile wide by an inch deep, okay? Um, adolescence, my fear restricts putting myself at the school and, oh, I missed that one. That was too bad, Jess, if you can, oh, there we go. Fear of rejection, fear of not coping if the demand is too great. Oh, fear of success. Yeah, that can be a really huge one. I wish I could see who that was. Um, yeah, I can't, it might've been Elaine um yeah but it was it was okay great thanks um yeah it's so important for us to know that place because if you're ever going to step to that level beyond success which is called significance you're gonna have to be brave and you're gonna have to look your butt straight in the eye <laughs> okay and so here's the thing um you repel the wrong ones and you attract the right ones when you get very very clear on who you work with um Okay, Juanita, when they back out of the meeting, they're yeah, that you don't reschedule them. Great, knowing your Zoom in. And so when you get very, very clear, you repel the wrong ones and you attract the right ones. Can't be everything to everyone. You end up no one to no nothing to anyone. When you are one inch wide by a mile deep, your marketing can actually land. Again, if we were trying to market to vets right now at the same time, we wouldn't have found you doesn't work that way right um i am missing part of that chat um so what's your butt you get to cut through the mainstream that's the whole piece is that you get to cut through the noise but you have to be willing to in our facility when i opened up i was everything to everyone and we were full in three weeks it was fantastic for about three weeks and then i realized <laughs> the schools <laughs> and the little littles and the people that I had never worked with, I was not able to be authentic with. I was able to do a good job and the herd was fantastic for a while, but then the herd started to break down and I started to break down and we moved towards it. And so the big question is, are you willing to step into that greatness? That piece that you know, that piece that feels like joy, that piece that feels like light, and trust the process because those three weeks of going to the wrong places here we are two years later and i'm still trying to unravel those pieces 
And so I started that probably six weeks into my journey, unraveling, unraveling, unraveling. But still two years later, trying to pull that back is the last little bit of burnout. And so the question really is, are you here for the short term? Are you here to make some money and get out? Or are you here to build impact and grow and passion and fire in a place that you're excited about every day getting up and building? Um, money to do services. Yeah, you should reach out to me about that afterwards because the sponsorship program has been able to fill our facility for anybody who needs financially. Um, and here's the thing. If you can get to that place where you work exactly where you should be, you're heard as the guru and you as contributor, you're able to provide the results. In a place where you're able to provide the results, people find a way to pay for the services. When you're doing everything and you're working with everyone and you're, everyone's getting less results or no results, it is very hard for people to spend their hard-earned money to come back. If they get the results, they figure out a way to come back every single time because that's what people are looking for. So fear, I want to talk about fear quick because it's come up a couple times. What would you do if you're 10 times bolder? Write it down. We need to switch the narrative in our mind. What would you do if you were 10 times bolder? Every time fear comes up in my life, as opposed to acknowledging the fear and hanging out with the fear and in an energy, you know, kind of attraction-based world, you can feel the fear, which seems like a bad thing to do because it keeps coming, right? Um, if you're strong enough to do it anyway, as Lynn said, that's powerful. But what if you switch the narrative? What if you asked yourself a better question? What would I do if I was 10 times bolder? <clears throat> it gets your mind thinking towards the future and it gets your mind moving forward. What would you do if you were 10 times bolder? Uh, Juanita is getting some sponsorship requests out. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you show up to a sponsorship request, passion on fire, people want to be a part of what you do. If you show up from a place of like, well, we do this thing, nobody's following. So on that note, I'm super excited when it comes to niching to invite Joanne, if you're able to unmute Joanne Routier, if I'm saying it right, from Horse Whisper. She's in Ontario, Canada. She's been working her butt off to really step into a journey and step into the power of a niche. So Joanne, if you're there, I'd like to just give you a couple minutes here to talk about niching in your world. I can't see her, but if you're able to, Jess. Yeah. I don't see her. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. I'll look out for her. Yeah, for sure, to respect everyone's time. So, filling your facility, would I'm gonna assume you would all agree that if you believed you could fill your facility, it would be hands down all day long, <laughs> I'm gonna niche, right? Um, so how do you fill your facility? <laughs> Well, I always say less is more, and really, it's about keeping it simple. So number one, you're going to hear this from me all the time, passion on fire. Everybody was just talking about getting funding and getting sponsorships. When you show up in a place of understanding the power of the herd, understanding the horse-human connection, you know you can show up at a place of results because you're working one step ahead. You're not working with everyone and everyone everything and everyone and everything <laughs> you're showing up passion on fire those businesses those partnerships they want to be a part of what you do you talk to a funding unit they want to come out and see your place because they've never heard of a place that's taken such ownership in what they do it is rare to step into and meet people who are exceptional at what they do how do you become exceptional at what you do you work where you should be you work in that place from a less is more attitude of this is what I can show up to in the world. These are my strengths. These are my gifts. This is how I can bring it to the world. And they're willing to. As everybody think of somebody in your head who's willing to show up, passion on fire. You can all think of one right off the top of your head, right? What's the difference between those people and the business they're building and the attraction that's happening for them? 
they know their niche. Their passion on fire in that niche, not about everything in the world, about what they do, not about everything horse facilitated development, because we all know horses are incredible. They can do it all for a while. <laughs> they can't do it forever because they also have niches, right? But yeah, good question, iPhone. How do we do this? That's step two. And so step number one, before you try to fill your facility, you've got to get authentic about why you're doing this and the results and transformation that can happen in your facility and in your place. And whether you've ever seen a client or you've been doing this for 20 years, you need to find number one. And if you've never seen a client, you may be in the most advantageous position ever. Why? Because you, you haven't spent time with the wrong people. You haven't spent time trying to be everything to everyone. You're not in burnout. You're not down that road. You're just really excited about what the first human connection is. Okay, and what is that? It's the horse that changed your life. It's the reason that you're doing this work in the first place, right? You already know what that is. When you go back to your core self inside, you know what this work can do. And that's why you're here. You didn't go online and Google top paying entrepreneurial gigs and saw horse therapy at the top and decided to do it. <laughs> you did this because something some horse changed your life. There was a connection that was undeniable, undescribable, that you knew something bigger was happening. That's how you find passion on fire. Lynn, pounce on every opportunity to talk about what you do. Yeah, yeah. So, but when you read Lynn's comment, it's pounce. But you can't pounce if you're not passion on fire, right? Pouncing is a passion on fire place. And so if you're in the place of like, well, I'm doing this horse thing, I suggest you keep your mouth quiet. Until you find the place where you remind yourself why you're doing this work and who you're doing it with and that you're the niche and that when you show up with the right people, with your incredible herd, you're going to change a whole heck of a lot of lives. So number one was passion on fire. Number two, pounce on every opportunity to talk about what you do. Share your passion. Okay. Share your passion. And this, again, is not a made up place. This is not an elevator speech. This is, you know, what do you do? Where do I start? <laughs> you know, this is a place of authentically sharing your passion. Uh, yeah, Carrie, thanks for showing up. That's great. Um, and authentically sharing your passion within your niche. Okay. So we don't forget that, hey, there's a specific group of people that I can help create transformational results with. And when you share your passion within your niche, you're that magnifying glass that zeroes through. So you're on social media. You don't say, hey, we do horse facilitated development. Anyone with a heartbeat, come on out. <laughs> you say, are you a woman? And again, I'm just going back to my last example, if I can remember it. Are you a woman who's at a pivotal point in your life and you know you need to make a decision? If you're ready, come up for a complimentary walk and talk. Okay. Can you see how when you share directly to a niche, if you were a man, you wouldn't respond to that. If you had a child that you wanted to bring out, you wouldn't respond to that. If you're a woman, and maybe you'd define some age that was at a point in their life <laughs> where they needed to make a decision, would you think about responding to that? You betcha. Is there millions of women, women in their life who need to make a decision to move forward? You betcha. Don't worry about the size of your town. I live in a town of 900 people, half an hour out of a town of 900 people. And we've had people from all over the world come to our facility. Um, iPhone too. I'm honoring my horse by doing my program. He saved my life. Okay. That's that starting point. iPhone. That's that place that you can get passion on fire about. Okay. What if that horse wasn't there to save your life? Guess what? Your herd is going to save, transform millions of lives around the world. If you're willing to get passion on fire and you're willing to zero in on the people that you can actually affect change with. Uh, Jessica's on the chat. That's awesome. So number one, don't talk to anyone until you get passion on fire. If you're having a bad day and you just need a day off, go hang with your herd and get some horse therapy, okay? And get yourself back up the next day. Number two, share your passion within your niche. So where are you going to share? Well, within your niche. If it's children, I don't know, get inspired and call the schools. Get inspired, call the community services. Put an ad up at the park. I don't know, whatever the inspired action is, within your specific niche, 
Okay. Once you get clear on your niche, you start to get inspiration because you know the right ones that you should be working with. Less is always more. So what's number three? It's only ever free. Okay. Make offers. This is where especially equine entrepreneurs can get nervous and they think, oh gosh, I don't want to look like a salesperson. So they get passion on fire. They share their passion. They pounce, as Lynn says. <laughs> they pounce in that way and not in like a uh, gross salesman, but they, they're so passionate about it. People hear it and they want to be a part of what they do. And then they don't make the offer. Okay, You cannot fill your facility if you don't make the offer. I'm going to give you an example. I wanted to learn how to drive car, drive pony. Okay, So I had two ponies. They were getting fat. I really wanted to learn how to do that. And I was fumbling around on my own. And then I ran into an old cowboy in town, okay? So I saw him and I was like, oh gosh, Danny, I'm passionate on fire, okay? I get over there, Danny, I've got these two um, ponies and I really wanna learn how to drive. That's what he does. He teaches people how to drive, okay? He never made the offer. He never made the offer. Anybody in the chat, what would you be thinking at that place? They didn't make the offer. I thought he didn't wanna work with me or I actually <laughs> thought he hated the ponies. Okay, because he'd made a mention of that he had never worked with ponies. That's all he said was he was kind of a quiet old cowboy. And he just said, so, you know, he just said, I haven't worked with ponies before. Could he work with ponies? Of course he could work with ponies, right? I thought he didn't want to work with me or he didn't want to work with ponies. Okay, so he didn't make the offer. So I waited and waited and waited. And then finally, one day, only because I really had to, because my one pony was getting so fat, I had to do something about it. I called him up. We ended up working together, but that's not the norm. The norm is you don't make the offer and the people walk away thinking, I guess I'm not their client. I guess they don't want to work with me. I guess I'm not a good fit. Okay. So making the offer doesn't have to sound like a used car salesman. Making the offer can sound like a passion on fire. You run into some, at that point, you run into someone, they say, Hey, what are you doing these days? This is a real basic example. I'm doing horse facilitated development. It's a total 180 from what I've ever done. But gosh, I got to tell you, it's the good work. It's the most powerful work I've ever done. And I'm surrounded with women who are at the point of their life. They're wanting to make a decision. And guess what? They're actually able to make a decision with my incredible herd. You should come out sometime. That's how easy a make an offer can look like. But how many of you back off at that place where you've shared your passion authentically? You're not doing it from a sales pitch, an elevator pitch. You just shared what you love. And they showed they were a little bit interested. And then you got nervous and you said, great, we'll have a good day. <laughs> you walked away, right? Entrepreneurs do it all the time. And equine entrepreneurs who have never been in business do it even more. Okay. So what's the make offer? Um, as Jess says, my go-to is complimentary walk and talk. Why? Because I steward my horses very, very high. I want to know who is coming out and whether they're safe for my horses prior to jumping into six rounds or something. I guarantee you when you're working in the niche, you should be your passion on fire, they come out to meet the herd, they will sign up for sessions every single time. We talk about this all the time. And everybody always agrees. When people come out, you allow them to feel the power of the herd, they're going to sign up. There is, there is very little other modalities that can touch the horse-human connection when you allow it and you allow and trust it and facilitate from unknown moments, okay? How do you get people out? you make offers. So maybe it's on your social media. Be very clear within your niche, who you're talking to, cut through so the magnifying glass can actually hit them, and then make an offer to your niche. I have four spots this week open for complimentary walk and talk. If you want one of them, PM me ASAP because they go really quick, okay? If those people are middle-aged women who are at a point of change in their life and ready to make a decision, they have nothing to lose in that PM, okay? People are watching what you do, but they need to be clear on what you do and they need to have an open door because it took me months and months and months to go back to Danny to say, any chance I could pay you to teach me how to drive cart, okay? Many people would never have made that call because we all fear failure and we all fear rejection, okay? So a demo, I talked to a friend the other day, we were saying how it's hard to explain what we do because working with the horse is more of a feeling. It's hard to put into words. Exactly. The work we do is experiential, right? Less is more. So many people 
try to oversell in a place that is not the right environment. So when you're trying to sell, when you're downtown and you run into someone, they're not going to buy off you right there, but they could commit to come experience what you do. And so oftentimes I'll say something like, it's experiential. You've got to come check it out. Just come check it out for yourself. Love you to meet the herd. Complimentary walk and talk. Okay. So make your offers. If you want to get into the social services, get passion on fire, call up the social services or send them an email. Less is more. Don't say too much. Share your passion. Hey, I'm in horse facilitated development. You may or may not know about it, but I'd love to come and chat with you. Would you have 15 minutes in the next week that I could pop in? Okay, less is more. Keep it really, really simple. And when you get there, you're not trying to sell them there either. You're simply saying, yeah, this is what I do. This is the niche I work in. I'd love to have you out. It's experiential. Are you available mornings or afternoons? Invite them out. It's the herd that will sell them on what you do. That's how you fill your facility. As you can tell, I'm passionate about this. I can go on and on and on. So on that note, we're going to give you a tool for confidence in your back pocket because I think I'm hitting time here. Um, so when you work in your niche, when you get one inch wide by a mile deep, you can cut through the noise. When you cut through the noise, people can hear you. If you're not willing to cut through the noise, you become the noise. In the noise, you have competition with the largest, fanciest, best competition around. When you cut through the noise and you put a magnifying glass on, people can start finding you. You will start getting calls. You will feel so comfortable to talk to people when it's the right place because you know your niche. You'll feel super comfortable to say no when the test comes along to work with adults when you only work with kids. But you need some confidence for your back pocket when it's time to facilitate. And so, uh, Jess, I'd love, I'm going to pass it over to Jessica, my business partner. Um, phenomenal horsewoman, phenomenal mother, has two uh, young children, has a career in leadership outside of this. Um, has a really phenomenal way of working uh, in the unknown moments and facilitating in the unknown moments. And so Jess, I'd love to pass it over to you and just kind of talk a little bit exercises versus confidence and what is today's back pocket tool? Hi everyone. And thank you for the introduction there, Tamara. So one thing you will always hear us talk about is facilitating from the unknown moment and truly relying on your horse's immediate feedback in the present moment to guide your sessions. Um, I've posted a couple of videos previously in the round pen about what that kind of looks like. Um, and this is another tool that you can have in your back pocket when you are looking to kind of work through a problem or a situation that you've just uncovered. So, um, a lot of the time I, I go on trail walks with um, clients um, leading a horse and um, I kind of put this together to kind of guide what you can kind of do on a trail walk um, with your horse being the leader of it. So um, the first part of it is the togetherness. You're facilitating the horse human connection, that partnership and um, providing the opportunity to grow from it. And I always say this a lot, it is so important to allow your horse to be a horse. So if in your mind you are expecting to go on a trail walk and your horse plants its feet, it's really easy to slip into that place of, oh no, my horse isn't doing the right thing or, or like I need to train my horse to walk. We absolutely don't want to go there. It takes you out the present moment and it prevents your client from working through something. There's a reason that your horse is planting its feet. So if you can kind of ground yourself with allow your horse to be a horse and work in that moment. And in this example, why isn't the horse wanting to follow and, and allow the opportunity of that to happen? So um, the next part is reflect. So in any situation in sessions, reflection is a large part of it. And as facilitators, we also should, we watch for the nonverbal communication that the horse is giving us and also encourage the client to as well. And one thing I always say um, and empower clients with is the ability to read nonverbal communication. Um, this is something we've done right from the moment we are born. Before we can even speak, we can read nonverbal communication. So I really go from that place of empowering clients to also recognize that in horses and also how they could recognize that in their interactions off of your facility as well. So when you're reflecting on the situation or the problem that you're working on, you're reading the horse and you're being present, 
um, there will be a, a moment of acceptance. Um, and oftentimes this will look like a big breath from your horse, a big sigh, the lowering of the head, a lick and a chew. Um, and it, if you, it, although very subtle, um, it can be really impactful um, for clients to have a thousand pound animal that isn't understanding English or understanding the story, but to pick up off of that sense of acceptance. Um, it's like a big relief for everyone. And if that doesn't happen, remain present and keep kind of working through it, walking around, go back to reflecting, go back to the togetherness and getting present. But if you get to that place of acceptance on the trail, um, what can the client invite with them? Um, what can they bring forward from that experience and honor in themselves, um, which is really powerful to um, to do in, in working through situations, working through problems. There's always gonna be a positive or something that you can invite on the next part of your trail. And the, the biggest thing, once you've invited things forward, what can you leave behind? What of this experience, this problem, this situation, what can you leave behind? And um, really the, the horse is going to guide that. And it's really important that you um, step back, you always say that, you know, step back and allow the magic of facilitation to happen, allow the silences, allow 10 minutes to pass by before you get a lick and chew, for example. Um, and keeping, you know, with this theme of today, like less is more, the same applies to facilitation as well and what we do and allowing the horse to be a horse. Um, Another great thing that you can do with this trail um, back pocket tool is as you're walking, collect mementos on the way. Those key pieces um, in reflection that you can hear, you know, pick up a rock, pick up um, a, a piece of like a random feather, whatever's on your trail, pick it up and hand it to your client so that you get like a visual and you'll probably notice the horse reacting with what you're picking up on the way and then the same thing when you invite those pieces on the next part of the trail and leave them behind you physically can leave them behind so um again real quick like this is a great tool to have in your back pocket you can use the trail here to kind of help guide the session um and whip it out when you need to hit the trail and walk through something I'm talking and I'm muted. There we go. So uh, Jess, can you give me a thumbs up? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, so yeah, confidence in your back pocket. It's, it's about allowing the horse human connection, right? Understanding that we are simply contributors to that. And the more that we allow it, the more that we can see that acceptance, the invite, the togetherness. Um, and when we work with the exact people we should be working with, this becomes easier and easier. We can find that confidence because we're not trying to imposter. We're not trying to be someone that we're not. We're not trying to show up in an arena that we are uncomfortable with. So uh, this is gonna show up in the round pen. So if you're not in the round pen, jump on Facebook um, and just put it in the round pen. It'll be there under files, okay? So for any of that you are in the round pen, there's a fair number of tools for confidence in your back pocket under files already in there, okay? I wanna be really, really clear because you hear us say all the time, we're not into exercises. We're not into setting up obstacle courses with expected outcomes, right? It's the horse human connection. It's facilitating in unknown moments. It's standing back, it's getting present. It's becoming aware from that present place of what's really going on. It's allowing it to happen. And it's finding the trust space within ourselves to trust our herd, to trust ourself and allow them to be exceptional. That's where the magic happens. And so this last bit, set your life on fire, right? You're not here to try to please everybody and be everything to everyone. You're here, you have gifts, strengths, you have a zone of genius, you are the niche. Your niche, your zone of genius, your gifts and strengths are truly yours. And you're the only person that can bring them forward. And when you do, I guarantee you cut through the noise and you start working at a level beyond success and it's called significance. And so I love this quote, set your life on fire, seek those who fan your flames. They're out there. And whether it's, you know, I don't have a round pen, I live in a tiny town, all of these pieces, 
We all have them. And so last thing I love to do is it's called ring the bell. We're on the hour, but I love people in the chat to ring your own bell. What are your successes from the last week, from the last month? Anything maybe you've never shared with somebody else can be tiny, can be huge. This is about celebrating you. Okay, it's about um, moving yourself forward. Someone celebrated and rang the bell today in the round pen about a blue boy, an outhouse coming, which meant like bring on the clients, right? I now have an outhouse. I'm building my, my I'm, I'm serious about this and I'm building. And that was such a huge ring the bell. So I want to be clear, there's no um, better or worse. It's about showing up. Um, as each of you did today. So my ring the bell, I'm going to ring the bell for each of you that showed up. You could be doing anything else. You showed up. Um, I'm going to seriously encourage each of you uh, to not only ring the bell here about what it is for yourself that your success, um, but to step into your niche and start filling your facility. And the whole fear of, well, is there enough people? Well, my question is, how's it working out currently? <laughs> okay, there's a power inside of you that people are looking for. But if they can't find you, they're finding the next best thing because they don't know amongst everything you're doing that you're out there. Let's get some. I want to celebrate with you. I'm going to jump into the chat. So uh, we've got a website going. Oh, give me one moment. And but just so um, many. Good. I'm going to jump in there, but feel free. Last one I've gotten up here. If you don't know how to get to the round pen, there you go. There it is. Our next round pen date is in there, but I want to celebrate successes. Um, seeing, seeing this as possible, Holly, that is powerful. iPhone, finally finished my website, going live this week, fantastic. Uh, Lynn showed up, good job. Donna, very active with the final steps, providing services and stop avoiding. Donna, that's powerful, powerful. iPhone 2 said they just launched the programs on Sunday, or on Saturday, pardon me, we celebrate you, that is incredible. Picked up blue barrels that will help build obstacles and equipment to run a quality program. Jillian, I love it. Started with clients after a long and icy winter. I feel ya. That is huge, huge, huge. Um, I have officially retired from full-time nursing, Lisa, and now I'm full-time EAL. Woo! The world's looking for you, Lisa. I love it. Found my niche book to web designer, Alana. Um, Juanita, snow is almost gone. That would make that would be my bell. It makes me feel better that you can set up Stickman. Yeah. Have a booth. Barb. Yeah, yeah. Wellness Fair this Saturday. New logo coming. Niche rebrand. Joanne. I love it. And I have seen it and it's incredible. So, Shell, I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong. I get my new fields the beginning of May. Holy smackers. Mel just created uh, commerce for. Oh, pardon me, and commence, pardon me, my eight-week after-school program. Yeah, you did, Mel. Heather Hanlon made a flyer based on my niche. Look at all of you. You're already niching. Uh, Deb Mc, uh, McLean, have a web designer meeting this week to make a flyer for your niche. Oh, my gosh. Heather, I'm finding my niche. I'm so excited. Janie. Hey, Janie. Uh, I know it's really late your time, so thanks for showing up. Definitely getting more confident in stepping out and inviting others to visit the herd. Yeah, make the offer, right? That's it. Come come meet my herd. And Nicole, and keep them in if you haven't gotten yours in there yet, ring your bell. Uh, partnered with three local nonprofits serving tra trafficking survivors. Nicole, the world is looking for you. I guarantee it. Absolutely powerful stuff, everyone. So we're a couple minutes over. Thank you all for showing up. I think I missed one in the chat. I want to make sure. Don Roberts just completed plans for track, round pen, and barn. Oh my goodness. You're all incredible. Thank you for showing up. Fortune favors the brave. We're going to do that draw for the giveaway. You'll have 24 hours in the round pen to uh, collect it if your name comes up. So thank you all for showing up. Thanks for spending an hour with us and uh, post in the round pen. We love seeing your questions, your information, anything you need, throw it in there. But thank you for showing up. It's been a great hour. Thanks, everyone. Jess, if you want to stop recording.